The first question is from Arif Qazi from London, UK. The month of Dhul Hijjah is after four to five days. What is the importance of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah? And that's a very important question. I would like to thank Brother Arif for asking this question because according to me, the importance of the first 10 Dhul Hijjah are the forgotten Sunnah of the beloved Prophet. Unfortunately, most of the Muslims throughout the world have forgotten the importance of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Most of us Muslims very well know about Ramadan and we prepare for the month of Ramadan and we know most of its advantage, most of the blessings of Ramadan. But unfortunately, very few of us Muslims are aware of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes an oath in the glorious Quran in Surah Fajr, chapter number 9, verse number 1 and 2, where Allah says, Wal Fajr, Wal Ayal in Ash, by Fajr, by dawn, and by the 10 nights. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking the oath of Fajr and by 10 nights. Here the Mufassirin say, when Allah is taking the oath, Walayal in Ash, that is by the 10 nights, it is referring to the first 10 days of the Raja. Now, people will wonder why does Allah use the word nights when he's referring to the days of the first 10 days of the Raja? This is common in many languages. If I have to say in English that I was 10 days in New York, I spent 10 days in New York. But naturally, when I say I spent 10 days in New York, it means I spent 10 days and 10 nights in New York. It's understood. When I say days, many a times the nights are included. Similarly, in Arabic, when days are mentioned, the nights are included. And when nights are mentioned, many a times even the days are included. It can only mean night, it can mean day and night also, it can mean only day, depending upon the context. So when Allah says here, He's taking the oath of 10 nights. The Mufassirin, they say, it refers to the first 10 days of the Nijja. And if you read Tafsir ibn Khasir, it says that the first 10 days of the Nijja are the most important days in the complete year. There are no days besides these 10 days which are more important. These 10 days in the full year are the most important days of the year even more important than the last 10 days of Ramadan. But the last 10 nights of Ramadan are more important than the first 10 nights of the Lija. Because in the last 10 nights of Ramadan is the Laylatul Qadr. Because Laylatul Qadr falls in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, the last 10 nights of Ramadan are the most important 10 nights in the full year and the first 10 days of the Lija are the most important days in the full year. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume 2, hadith number 969. The Prophet said, there are no deeds better than the deeds done on the first 10 days of the Lija. There are no deeds done on any other day. Better than the deeds done on the first 10 days of the Lija. So the Sahaba asked the Prophet, what about Jihad? The Prophet said, even Jihad, the deeds done on the first 10 days of the Lija are better even than Jihad. Except if Jihad is done with the wealth and the life of the person and the person returns back without any of the two. That means if a person goes for jihad with his wealth and his life and he is martyred, that is the only deed, one deed, which is better than the good deeds done in the first 10 days of the Rija. A similar message is repeated in al darimi Hadith number 1925. It's narrated by Ibn Abbas, 
that the Prophet peace be upon him said. The deeds done in the first ten of the Dhulija are the best deeds. There is no other deed done on any other day which is better than the deeds done in the first ten days of the Rija. And when someone asked the Prophet, what about jihad? The Prophet said, even jihad. Unless the person goes for jihad with his wealth and life and comes back without both of them. That means unless a person is martyred in the battlefield while doing jihad, that is the only deed which is better than the good deeds done in the first 10 days of Dhulija. That means the first 10 days of Dhulija are the most important 10 days in the full year. There is no doubt about it. And unfortunately, most of us Muslims are unaware of this fact. It's mentioned in Sai Muslim, volume 3, hadith number 2747, when the beloved Prophet Musa was asked about the fasting on the day of Arafah. The beloved Prophet Musa said that fasting on the day of Arafah expiates the sins of the previous year and the coming year. The most important fast after the first fast of Ramadan is the fasting on the day of Arafah. It's the most important. There are some scholars, very few, who say fasting of Muharram, the fasting of Ashura, is the most important after the first fast of Ramadan because the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu we say that fasting in Muharram and Ashura is the most important fast after the fast of Ramadan. But in this fast, the Prophet said, the sins of the previous year is expiated, is forgiven. But if you fast during the day of Arafah, then the sins of the previous year and the next year, the following year, two years are forgiven. That is the reason most of the scholars say that the most important fast after the fasting of the further fast of Ramadan is the fasting of Arafah. But it is unanimous that these two fast, the fasting of Arafah and the fasting of Ashura, are the two most important fast after the first fast of Ramadan. It further mentioned in Sunan Abu Dawud, word number three, hadith number 2437, that the wives of the Prophet said, the Prophet fasted during the first nine days of the religion. And he fasted during Ashura and three days every month. The first Monday, and 230. We come to know from this hadith that the Prophet fasted all the nine days, the first nine days of the Lija. That means besides the ninth of the Lija, the day of Arafah, it is mustahab, it is sunnah to fast all the first nine days of the Lija. If someone says I cannot, then at least fast besides Arafah. Monday and Thursday. But the best is fasting all the first nine days of the Raja because these are the best days of the year. One may ask, why not fast the ten days? Why only first ten days? The reason is our beloved Prophet Muhammad said. Let's mention sure inside Bukhari, verse number three, hadith number one nine nine one, that the Prophet said it is prohibited to fast on. Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Both the Eidain, Eid al-Fitr, the Eid after Ramadan, and Eid al-Adha, that is the 10th of the Lajja. These two days are the days of Eid, so the Prophet said it is prohibited to fast on the two days of Eid. That is the reason it is most up to fast on the first nine days of the Lajja. It's further mentioned in Sai Muslim that the Prophet said, you should not fast on the Ayyam al-Tashri. That means the three days following the Eid al-Adha. Because these are the days of eating and drinking. And the Prophet also said, it's mentioned Sai Muslim, that if you are slaughtering an animal, then that person should not cut his nail or cut his hair 
from the first day of the Nijjah till he slaughters the animal. If you are doing Qurbani, if you are slaughtering, then it is mustahab. It is sunnah that you should not cut your nails or cut your hair from the first day of the Nijjah till the time you slaughter the animal. But if someone is slaughtering on behalf of someone else, then that person need not follow this rule. Means if I'm not slaughtering and if somebody is slaughtering on my behalf, then I need not follow this rule. If I'm slaughtering myself, then this rule has to be followed. It is further mentioned in Futul Bari that the Prophet recommended that during these first 10 days of Dhul you should say the Takbir. And it's mentioned in Futul Bari that the Takbir is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. This is the takbir. It is recommended. All the ten days should decide. A similar message is repeated in Musnad Ahmad, hadith number 5446, where the Prophet said that according to Ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the Prophet said, there are no deeds better than the deeds done on the first ten days of Zulijah. Therefore, Say the Tahleel, La ilaha illallah. Say the Takbir, Allah Akbar. Say the Tahmeed, Alhamdulillah. Same thing. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. So it is recommended that all these 10 days you say the Takbir, the Tahleel, the Tahmeed. It's further mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 2, page number 65, that Abdullah ibn Umar, he said, and Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with them both, that Abdullah ibn Umar and Abu Huraira, they used to go out in the marketplace during the first 10 days of the Rijjah and loudly say the Takbirat. And when the other Sahaba used to hear, then they should repeat it by themselves. Now, do we see any Muslims in the marketplace in the mall, in the soup, saying the takbir loudly during the first 10 days, maybe in some countries, maybe some of the Gulf countries, but normally in India, Pakistan, in Malaysia, Indonesia, we don't find Muslims going out to the marketplace and saying loudly, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allah Akbar. No, we don't find it. So inshallah, most of the viewers, I would like to tell you that the first 10 days of Dhulhijjah, inshallah, will be after four or five days. In Malaysia, in Saudi, in the Gulf country, inshallah, it will be from the 22nd of July, from Wednesday, four days from today. Other countries, it will be after five days, maybe India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, and some countries maybe one day later. See to it that we follow these sunnah and revive the sunnah and do not let the first 10 days go in waste. This topic of the first 10 days will actually require a big talk for a few hours. Time is limited. I will just mention the important good deeds that a person should do during these first 10 days of the Nijjah. I will not mention all, I will mention the important 35 ones. Number one is that you should pray your all five times daily for the Salah in Jamaat in the mosque. Number two, if you have not done Hajj and if Hajj is fard on you, if you have the means and the wealth and the health and you are an adult, then doing Hajj is fard. Even if you have done it, if you don't do it again, it is musta, it is good, you can do it. But unfortunately, now we are going through the pandemic. The coronavirus COVID-19 that is the reason the foreigners, those who are outside Saudi, but the Saudis and the foreigners in Saudi, they can do, but only a limited few, only a few thousand, I think, will be permitted this Hajj. Inshallah, we'll hope that Allah gives us the chance next year, Inshallah, to do Hajj. Number three, that do not do any haram during this first 10 days of the Nijjah. You should not do haram throughout your life, but be particular, not only the major sins, avoid totally even the minor sins during these 10 days. 
you have to not do sins throughout your life but be more particular during the first 10 days of Dhulhijjah that even by mistake do not do any sin leave aside the major sin do not even do the minor sins the fourth point is fast during Yomul Arafah the ninth Dhulhijjah the day of Arafah inshallah your previous year's sins and the next year's sin will be forgiven inshallah expiated would be forgiven inshallah but natural when the hadith says your sins will be forgiven it's understood the minor sins not the major sins point number five it's preferable you fast the first nine days of Dhulhijjah all the first nine days if you cannot for any particular reason at least fast on Arafah and Monday and Thursday but preferable you fast all the nine days the first nine days of the Lijjah. The sixth point is that slaughter an animal if you have the capacity on Yom Nahab. That is on Eid al Adha or the three days following on Ayyam al Tashri. Seventh is say the Tasbih, Subhanallah, say the Tahleel, La ilaha illallah, say the Takbirat, let Allah Akbar, say the Tahmeed, Alhamdulillah. Or as I said earlier, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, walillah alhamdulillah. As many times as you can during all these 10 days. The more you say, the better it will be and you will be rewarded a lot for this. Eighth is, pray your tahajjud during the last one third of the night and recite long verses of the Quran. The longer you do, the better. At least read eight rakat tahajjud followed by the witr three rakat and for long hours during the last one-third of night. Pray your sunnat muqadda There are 12 sunnat muqadda in the full day. Two rakah sunnah before the Fajr Salah. Two plus two, four rakah sunnah before the Dhuhr Salah. Two rakah sunnah after the Dhuhr Salah. Two rakah sunnah after the Maghrib Salah. And two rakah sunnah after the Isha Salah. So totally there are 12 Sunnat al and the Prophet said that anyone who read these 12 Sunnat al regularly, inshallah, he will go to Jannah and get a house close to the Prophet. Pray your Salat al Doha, preferably 4 rakat, you can even pray 2 rakat, after sunrise, anytime after 20 minutes, till before 20 minutes of the sun reaching its highest point. See to it that you do maximum charity during these 10 days. Besides your further zakat, do as much of charity as you can. Do dua before iftar. And since we'll be fasting, so dua before iftar is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do as much as dua as you can during all these 10 days. Do as much of zikr as you can during these 10 days. Read as much of the Quran as you can during these 10 days. Do tilawat of Quran. If you can, you do memorization of the Quran. Read the Quran. If you don't know Arabic as a language, read along with the Arabic portion. Read the translation in the language you understand the best. Read the tafsir of the Quran. If you can, teach Quran to others. Ask Allah for forgiveness. As much as you can do istighfar, do during these first 10 days of the religion. Recite as much as of the dua of the Prophet Muhammad all the dua which are recommended and the best book to refer is the fortress of the Muslim that Hispanic Muslim where the authentic duas are mentioned do as many other good deeds as you can in these 10 days of the Lijjah as much as you can whatever small deed medium deed big good deed do as much as you can follow as much as of the Sunnah of the Prophet as you can during these first 10 days. For example, when you wear the footwear, wear with your right foot. When you remove the footwear, remove with your left foot. When you enter the mosque, enter with the right foot. When you step out of the mosque, step out from the left foot. When you're wearing the clothes, put your right hand first. When you're removing the clothes, remove it with the left side first. These are the sunnahs. When you're drinking water, sit down and drink water. As much as of the sunnah you can do, it is better during these first 10 days of the Lijjah. Then do Tazkiyah and Nafs, purification of the soul. Read as much as Sahih Hadith you can of the Prophet. Forgive people's fault as much as you can. 
avoid all the makru as much as the makru discourage acts you can avoid please avoid and don't do it do isla with the other muslims as much as you can do dawa with the non muslims invite them to the fold of islam invite them to us tawhid read the sunnat e ghair muqida the sunnat e ghair muqida are 10 in the full day two rakat sunnat after the zuhur salah after the two rakat of sunnat e muqida you can read two rakat sunnat e ghair muqida after the zuhur salah then 2 plus 2 four rakat before the asr salah two rakat before the maghrib salah and two rakat before the isha salah totally there are 10 sunnat e ghair muqida attend as many live lectures as you can of scholars the durus the lecture the question and answer session of the authentic scholars if you cannot attend personally then watch them on the videos on the social media on the youtube on the facebook you can hear them on the audio on the audio tape on the dvds on the social media you can read books of the seerah of the prophet you can read books of the authentic scholars give as much time as you can for your family members because the prophet said the best muslim is he who is best to his family especially his wife do not waste a single minute during this first ten days of zulhijah because these 10 days are the most important days of the year you cannot afford to waste a single minute be kind and nice to people be good to the neighbors be happy and cheerful and be nice and courteous to all the people living around you this was in brief about the 35 important points that should be done during the first 10 days of the lija there are many more you can add but since time is limited these are the important points i mentioned and inshallah for more details you can refer to my facebook and to my other lectures on this topic and i hope i have done justice in brief to the importance of the first 10 days of the lija